Good evening, everybody. This is Movie Maker 4678. And I'm coming back at you. How you doing? How's your nuts? How's everything? You feel me? All right, let's get to it. So, wow, this is my first movie review on YouTube in like 12 years or something. So, I'm just like fucking ecstatic. The Bob's Burgers movie is about a family called the Belchers trying to keep their restaurant afloat after an incident outside the restaurant that prevents people from coming in. Along the way, they find themselves in bizarre situations, some fun musical numbers, and a journey of self-reflection. How nice. Whenever I talk about movies, I like to keep it as spoiler-free as possible. I just think it enhances the experience not knowing much going in. Even though I had been tracking the progress of this film for the past two years, there was a storyline in there that I wasn't even expecting, and I thought that was great. So, definitely gonna try to keep it as spoiler-free as possible. So there's going to be two parts of this review. The first part is for people who have never seen the show. This is just to see how the movie works by itself. Without having watched the show, how does it work as a standalone movie? Does it work as a film? Does it not? Does it do the series justice? Does it fall flat on its face? We're going to talk about it right here. Don't be so mean. If you've never seen the show, which let's just try to ignore that you've been missing out on such a great show. I mean, come on. Going into this movie, I say you're going to have fun. The show doesn't follow a linear story episode per episode. It does have continuity, but you don't need to see the previous episode in order to understand the following. And same goes for the movie. It's pretty easy to understand the characters, even if they are a bit odd, and the story actually works a little better if you haven't seen the show, but shh, that's what we call a spoiler. It is ridiculous how insanely quick I fell in love with this world and the characters, and the movie does a great job carrying that over onto the big screen. The film has charm just from the opening 20th century logo. It's hard not to like this movie. The characters are insanely relatable, fun, hilarious, weird, and just insanely likable. And the film does them justice. In terms of filmmaking, this film is solid. The music is some of the best feel-good melodies you're going to hear this year, particularly the first track, Sunny Side Up Summer. It might even be my favorite song this year. It makes you feel good, it gets you excited, and it hits the right parts in the right places, and it's fucking incredible. God, this movie is so fucking great. Definitely check out the soundtrack when you get the chance. So definitely find the biggest theater you can find, because it's definitely worth it. It's a treat for the fucking ears. The direction is solid, the animation has never looked better, and again, the characters are just so engaging, and the world, it's just so bright, colorful, and fun. With a little bit of wackiness, this is a fun time at the movies regardless if you've ever seen the show. One thing I would like to point out is that this movie isn't anything groundbreaking. There's nothing in this movie that's going to make you go, Oh wow, holy shit! It's going to make you excited at parts, it's going to make you happy, and it might even disgust you. There's nothing groundbreaking, there's nothing revolutionary with this movie, but Boz Burgers isn't concerned with that. It likes to keep itself grounded, more or less, and it excels at that. So it really isn't an issue for me, but for a casual viewer, I could see them say, oh, well, that was it. You know, I, I, I could totally see someone saying that. Keep your expectations reasonable. You know what I'm saying? And here we come to the second part of the review for the fans, where I won't spoil anything, but if you would like to hear, you're totally welcome to come on in. If you've never seen the show and you want to check out the movie, I definitely recommend it. I'm going to give it five burgers out of five, and I'll explain later. Well, my biggest problem with the film is that by the end, looking back, I thought it was very strange that this was the story, after so many years in development, that this was the story the team decided to bring to the big screen. The film plays out exactly like an episode of the show, and I love that. My favorite TV show film adaptation is the original SpongeBob SquarePants movie. I've always loved that it feels exactly like the show, but it also does things a little differently. There was an edge to it. It went outside Bikini Bottom. It was epic. It was cinematic. It justified itself being brought to the big screen. The Bob's Burgers movie doesn't exactly do that for me. Going in, I was expecting this movie to go outside the town. I was even expecting an F-bomb. You know, just stuff that you wouldn't see on the show. But no, it plays exactly the same, only longer, and a few other things I'll get into in a moment. This story in particular feels like it could have been a three-part episode. And I would have liked to see something more grand. Maybe leave the town, like I said, or something, you know, something different. You know, the trailer suggests that. I thought the film would at least lean more towards this bigger adventure where it kind of feels 
very self-contained and I would have liked the film to have taken more risk but then again maybe because this is the first Bob's Burgers movie the movie itself was the risk so they really wanted to play it safe and I totally get that I'm not sh I'm sure I'm not sure what exactly happened I can only speculate but uh, that makes sense to me as a you know business related conversation but for a sequel I definitely want to see more grand situation and that's not the Bob's Burgers show but for a movie I feel like you got to do something different one thing I've noticed is that people feel that Tina and Jean are kind of sidelined in the picture. And I understand that because Luis is the driving force of the narrative. She is the she is the most reactive to the situation outside with the big hole. Let's go back to a little film you might have watched a few years ago called Avengers Infinity War. My favorite character is Captain America. In the movie, he isn't in it a whole ton. He's a very reactive character, as opposed to Iron Man or Doctor Strange, who are the ones moving the plot forward, while Captain America is kind of just moving with the plot. He's not really moving the plot. But, but every scene Captain America is in stays true to his character. And when he's on screen, his moments are just so amazing and perfect that I don't even notice or care that he's not in the movie that much. And that's how I feel about Gene and Tina. I feel like their characters are perfectly well represented in the film. They're even more developed here. Tina, not being doubtful about having a relationship with Jimmy Jr., but being doubtful about afterwards him saying yes. And what would that mean moving forward? And then Gene who I've never seen this doubtful of himself and his music abilities. So that was really interesting to see. And, it, you know, the characters get a little bit more development from this time around. And I found that was really interesting. And sure, am I biased? Of course, because Luis is my favorite character. But I never felt like Gene and Tina were disrespectfully sidelined for Luis. I felt like they were in the movie just in just the right amount. And it stays true to their characters. But for a sequel, if we ever get one, I definitely would like to see more focused on Gene and Tina. Particularly Tina, because, come on, she's the star of the show. Everyone knows Tina. Even if you've never seen the show, you know, you've seen Tina in a, in a gif. Or in a gif, whatever the fuck you want to say. Or definitely focus more on Gene, you know. If Gene is my least favorite character, maybe we could flesh him out more in the next one. And, you know, make him more, more likable for me. I don't hate Gene. But he is my least favorite character. So maybe that could be worked on in the sequel. The film is only focused on the Belchers, which is expected. But I can see fans get upset that their favorite side characters had, you know, nothing to do really. Or or some don't even show up. But, you know, the movie isn't about them. It's about the Belchers. So I don't really mind that. But again, it's something that I could see the fans bring up in discussion. So I, the movie is about the Belchers. What can I say? But Marshmallow definitely needs her own spin-off series, whatever the fuck. I love Marshmallow so much. Give her everything. But a lot of the side characters do get a little dance at the end credits. For me, I'm totally satisfied with that. My background with Bob's Burgers is that I started watching it when I was 16 years old. I was going through some, well, not the most pleasant times. And I just started watching the show because it was everywhere. And then I liked it at first. And then it was on my TV literally every single day. I fell in love with the characters, I, the world, the music, I'm telling you, it's great, and the movie does it justice. They go through money problems, but resolve them in such fun, wacky ways that you can't help but laugh and enjoy the absurdity. There's a shot in the film where Bob is super happy dancing and singing with Linda, and I'm going to make that my wallpaper. It just makes me so happy. It's so precious. Whenever these characters are happy, you root for them, you care for them, they feel real. Hell, to me, they are real. And I just fucking love them. And this movie only extends that. God, it's so great. So great. I'm going to tear up. It's, <laughs> it's really great. The worst part of the movie is the fact that the movie doesn't take enough risk for my liking. I would have liked to have seen stuff that we couldn't have seen on the regular show. Maybe push the edge a little bit. Uh, definitely giving us a grander story. You know, I just feel like it doesn't 
it doesn't go as far as it as it should have, you know, for a feature length film. But the real worst part is definitely the marketing by Disney, or should I say, lack thereof, because I have been seeing no promotion for this movie outside of little few teasers in, in the TV. Shit, I found I sound like an old man, but it's true. There haven't been that much advertisement. I feel like from the the, the studio, so I felt like. You know, they're really shooting themselves in the foot with that. Um, I can understand because, you know, I guess it isn't that big of a property and, you know, top. But I, I just hate how they handle this whole situation. I, I, if they had released a movie a week later after Top Gun, I mean, come on. Why would they put it? Why would they put it on the same? It's It's stupid that they did that. It's stupid. And, you know, again, with the marketing, it's like, I haven't seen a lot of people talk about it. I didn't see a lot of reviews for it. So, I mean, and I get it. It's not that big of a property, Bob's Burgers. But, I mean, come on, you're Disney. Come on, put put the money up. You know, fuck. Get Gordon Ramsay to make a fucking Bob's Burgers specialty burger. You get, you get the fucking money. Come on. But I wouldn't change a thing because this movie is just so good as it is. It's so great as it is. Like, I wouldn't change a thing. Like, all the problems I have with it are meaningless because I love the movie as it is. The best part of the movie is definitely the faithfulness to the original series. The, sh- the characters, the dialogue, the characters, the dialogue, the music, it is all there and it's such a great extension of the series that uh, it's just it's just so perfect. It's so satisfying. I love it. It's great for a Bob's Burgers fan, but for a casual moviegoer, it has great moments. But overall, I think the general audience is it's going to like it just fine. But um, it's definitely going to be more loved by the fans. But even if you're not, you're still going to have a blast with the movie. My fucking voice is <laughs> dying right now. I've done two videos today and I'm fucking dying. Fuck. Now, with a bigger budget, there are new camera movements and it totally works as a film. It has those cinematic moments that just make me smile every time I think about them. I remember watching the demo pilot way back in the day and it was kind of off-putting the animation. And then it it went on to be the traditional animation we see in the show to now on the big screen it's now in HD, there's shadows all over the place, there's more detail and it's just incredible how this transfers from the small screen to the big screen without losing any of the essence of the original charm of the animation. It's fucking incredible. I keep saying that. Could say I'm just really satisfied with the movie. It could have been gone. It could have been shit, but no, it it's great. It does the show justice, and it's a great entry point for non viewers of the show to get into the series. It's great. Also, there's a shot of a character crawling through a vent, and it's so bizarre, and the whole theater just roared with laughter. Even online, I've seen people pointing it out. It, it, it's it's great. I just wanted to point that. Out. I wanted to give that a shout out. Like I said, this is my favorite movie of the year. Is it the best? Mm. Does it make sense if there's a difference between a movie that you greatly like to a greatly made film? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, my favorite film from 2001 is Jurassic Park 3. My favorite movie ever. But is it the best movie from that year? Probably not. But do I care? No, because I still love it more than anything. But yeah, I think it's the best movie of the year, to be honest. (laughs) Not that I said all that. (laughs) Fuck a Top Gun. Because let me tell you, this movie just makes you feel good. It, it, It really does. It's funny, it's charming, the characters are immensely lovable, and it never gets too complicated with like the rules or plot. No, the plot is very basic, but that's the thing Bob's Burgers excels at. Bob's Burgers excels at simplicity and oftentimes finds this strange, beautiful creature that you just can't help but adore it's just so likable lovable it's so endearing i I gotta shut up i gotta shut up again i mean just by watching the credits i felt extremely proud and happy for the team even though i had nothing to do with the creation of the show the movie but just seeing how far they've come for over a decade it's inspiring really I just want to hug everyone involved for creating something so amazing. The movie, the show, the music, just everything. It's just... Here we go again. I can't I can't shut up. Now, am I talking as a fan of the show or as a casual moviegoer? Well, like I said, as a casual moviegoer, you're going to like the movie. But as a fan of the show, you're going to love it. 
but it does work on its own. If you've never seen the show, the movie is fun. It's a fun time. It's insanely likable from the beginning all the way to the very end. And I keep saying that because it's, it's just true. It's just true. It's just true. It's a movie that works, period. It's a movie that works, period. Like I said, this movie isn't anything crazy, but it doesn't need to be. The characters are great. It's rewatchable as hell. It makes you feel really good in a weird, beautiful way that only Bob's Burgers can do. I love it. Top that, Top Gun. We coming for you. No, we ain't. But fuck you. Fuck Tom Cruise. And, um... Um... Fuck Miles Teller. No, I'm just kidding. He's a great actor. But he, he just something... The thing about him just annoys me. Just annoys the hell out of me. He's a great actor, but like I said, just annoys the crap out of me. So in conclusion, I'm going to give this movie five burgers out of five. I recommend you go see it. Or if you've already seen it, definitely go see it again before it leaves theaters. Let's try to get a sequel, guys. It really deserves it. And besides that, go support 2D Animation. This is uh, Disney's first... 2D animated film since Winnie the Pooh back in 2011. And for 20th Century Fox, it's been 13, is it 13 years? Shit. Uh, what's, what's 12 minus 7? 5? Hold on, that's, hold on. You're, you're doing it way wrong. 22 minus 7. I mean, that'd be 15? I think you got it. 15? Is it 15? <gasps> it's 15! I got it. I didn't need no fucking calculator. Fuck you. Alright, fuck, fuck up, fuck a calculator. Fuck a Texas graph calculator, you feel me? Fuck it, I lost it. Fuck you gonna do for, fuck you gonna do, lib what the fuck you gonna do, high school library? You gonna fucking stop me from graduating? That was five years ago, suck my d So yeah, 2D animated films are rare these days, so let's just cherish this one. Definitely deserves all the love it's getting, cause it just, like I said, it's, it's just insanely it's just insanely satisfying that, that this movie turned out as good as it is, and it's just, it's great, it's great, it's just, it's just great, I can't stop, I can't stop thinking about it, it's just great. Also, and besides that, just go support your theaters, I mean, not the streaming shit, Let, let's cut that out, let's cut that out, let's cut that out, alright? If I have to see another movie on HBO Max, I'm, I'm gonna throw myself in front of a train. And I mean it this time. And I'm not. And, and, and this time I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell my mom. All right. This time, this time, I'm gonna go. And you know what? Even if my mom doesn't try to stop me, which you know still kind of hurts, I might do it. Yeah, yeah. Stop with the streaming shit. Go to the theaters. Get out of your fucking house for once. Fuck. You smell like a fucking horse or something, bro. I mean, I don't even know what a horse is. But wait. Anyway, that's it. That's for the review. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. This is Movie Maker 4678. One love. Peace. Scene. I'm out.